I, I mean, think, I think I might. You really? I'm I bet you're going to get a lot of email after this interview. I think, I think I might. You know what? I understood it. I understood it because fundamentally they got to know each other. My mother understood from meeting my dad that he did not, he was not clingy, nor did he want to own her. And I think she experienced this in two ways. She experienced this as, as a black woman in South Africa where the government basically owned black people. Right. And she also experienced this as a woman living in a world where men often own women. Yes. And here she met a man who showed no signs of wanting to own her and her womanhood and her independence. It's unusual. And so she went, that's the guy that I would like to have a baby with because I know that he's not going to try own me nor my baby. And so, and so that's how that came to be. And I think my dad was like, oh, this woman is not trying to trap me. She's because literally she said to him, I want a baby and I'd like you to give me the baby. And they, cause they were in a relationship now they were dating for a few months or I whatever. See. And, and then he said, no, I'm not ready to be a father. And she said, oh, I, I don't want you to be a father. I just need the baby. I want to to have a baby. This has nothing to do with you in that way. You will never see this baby. You will never raise this baby. You will never hear from us ever again. But are you angry with your mother for making that kind of bargain? Don't you, did, did you have a father hunger? I mean, especially no, your but stepfather I, but, was such a scumbag. No, but my, my, my dad, luckily, when I, when I was born, that was one of the funniest stories is my mom has me. And then, you know, she goes home to recover. And then the next time she sees my dad, he's like, Where's, where's my son? And she's like, oh, now you have a son? She's right. like, you don't have a son. You can't have a son sometimes. And I, no, and then, and then my dad was like, no, I want to see the baby. And then immediately, like from, so my whole life, I, I knew my dad. So I was lucky in that that experiment of hers never backfired on me, if that makes sense. And when you say you knew him, uh, you, you described you would walk down the street and yes. he'd have to walk on the other side of yeah. the street and wait to He you. was terrified of being arrested because of us. Because, in other words, it's a crime? Because he would have been, yeah. Would everyone it have been would've... a crime to, to have had sex with a black woman in yes. South Africa yeah, and have law, a baby? Yeah, the laws of miscegenation, they were called. You, weren't, they, you weren't allowed to they, have sex across races. So when this baby was born, did they say to your mother, give us the name of the father? We're gonna... Yeah. They did? Yeah, my birth certificate is still blank because of that. It was hilarious. How so, did she not give him the name? How did the she, authorities not lock her up? She, everyone, this was, I mean, I still imagine this scene and how amazing, you've got this black woman right giving birth in the hospital <laughs> you and she come out. saved up all her money and went to a private hospital and right. paid them for the cesarean section and there i am and i come out and she says everyone just looked at each other because there's this black woman and there's this very light-skinned baby and everyone looks at each other and this is apartheid south africa and then they went who who's the father and she said oh no he's from he's some guy from swaziland which is a landlocked country in South Africa. Right. It's a, so it's a separate country, technically. Right. And they she can't said, get him. oh, and she said, yeah, no, he's some guy from Swaziland. And she's like, and they just worked on the, the assumption that Swazi people can be very light skinned. And everyone just was just like, uh, okay, we, we're just going to move on here. What age does your mother say to you in order for you to have a healthy brain? How, what age does she tell you, hey, man, your father's a white guy. She never did. She never told you. No. And she never told you that uh, this, uh, did you wonder where is my father? No, because I saw him my whole life. I, I grew up with him, like not with him in the same space, but I, she would find ways to like sneak me to him. Well, and sneak so, you? Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. I would be angry about this. Why? Because you have to be snuck to see your but, own but father. But you don't know you're being snuck. That's the great thing about life, Howard. It's all about perspective. You don't know you're being snuck as a kid. Do you see a psychiatrist? Yeah. You do? Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I think I do. Yes, yes, I do. And isn't one of the issues that you're angry? What do you mean you think you do? <laughs> no, 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 because I was trying to think of what, what she refers herself to. Then I was like, yeah, I guess I would call it. Yes, a psychiatrist, a therapist. Yeah, yeah, okay. A therapist. Uh -huh. because, and, and when you talk about your issues, right? I would think one of your issues is your mother then marries a guy who is abusive. Right. Is Abel his name? Right. Abel. Uh, a fucking guy who hit you physically, beat your mother. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw a lot of uh, the worst in people. Right. And 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 you've got to be somewhat angry in that session where you go, you know, I had this wonderful man who was a father, but he was not living with me. I definitely he, was angry. Yes. Yeah, definitely. But, I mean, that's that's something, again, even before therapy, I'm lucky that my mother in many ways served as my therapist. Yeah. Because I had to work through that anger. I had to work through that anger because my mother, she said something that terrified me. And she said, if you don't work through you, your anger, you will become the abusive man that you hate. That's right. And if you look at it, that that's happened, unfortunately, so many times in people's lives where they grew up, young boys grew up in abusive households and they hate what their fathers have done to their mothers. 
but then they go on and do that to their wives and their girlfriends. And so my mom said to me, you have to let go of that anger, kid. Do you think that's why you've devoted your life? You've said stand-up comedy and entertainment is my wife. I'm married to this. Yes. I'm not going to be in a relationship, a long-term relationship right. with a woman because I'm going out on the road seven days a week. Yeah. Do you think you're avoiding that kind of intimacy because you see no. how horrible it can become? No, I didn't. I didn't say I don't have intimacy. I just said that that stand-up is my wife. There's a difference. How do women put up with that in your personal life? Well, I think if you're honest with women, they, they will surprise you in how intelligent and accommodating and loving they can be. Because, I mean, it's... Intimacy is, I think we, I think in society we've gotten so used to conflating um, a, a statement of commitment with intimacy and love. And I don't think the two need to be intertwined. Are you capable of intimacy and love after you see a guy like Abel who is, such, and, and even see your, your, your own mother? Most definitely. Most you definitely. Because here's my, here's my thing as well. The life is full of complexities. And this is like one thing that I think a lot of people, I, I hope, would understand. Even though I grew up, in an extremely abusive household with a man who abused my mother and 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 suffered through alcoholism i will i will not lie and say i didn't love him really yes you're talking about abe i yes i loved him and he loved my mom and my mom loved him and there were many moments when as a family we were happy what did and you things love about were good you you find things to love that's the difficulty Don't of abuse you think you really loved no, the idea of no. a father and you want that you needed no, a man in your no, life no 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 that's the thing that's the difficulty of abuse that we like abuse to be black and white but it's not though and that's the thing is a person does not exist perpetually in a state of abuse most of the time right and so a lot of people will tell you you'll be like but how could you still love that man and how could you and the people judge women why would you? and it's like no you don't understand because there, there are parts to human beings. We all have those parts in us. And so I'm saying that we existed in the, state, the space where, yes, I hated, hated and despised the, the abusive part of him. But my mom also taught me to pity him because he, he was struggling with alcohol abuse. He was struggling with being unable to control himself. And she didn't say that he shouldn't be accountable. I think that's the mistake some people make. You know, people You're should still be held accountable for their actions. But I, I wasn't going to exist in the states of being like, oh, I hate this man. It's like, no, I had to get I had to get over that. Your mother and this man, uh, they had two kids together. Right. My the, two brothers. Your two yeah. brothers. You close with those guys? Yeah. Yeah. And, and they still they still associate with him. They, they're you still don't associate sons. with him no. anymore. No, because he's, he's not my dad. What know? about your biological dad? Is he still alive? Yeah. He's in Switzerland, and I still have contact with him. Is he freaked out by your success and, and how well-known <laughs> you are? I mean, he's got to be completely amazed. I think a little bit, but no. He, and luckily, he tracked me my whole life. Like, it, like we, we lost contact for, for many years, and then we regained contact. But he had been, you know, he had been, like, clipping little newspaper stories of me, and he had been everything of my life he had followed. And you so, lost contact with him? Yeah. What, because, whose fault was that? Well, my stepfather didn't want my mom maintaining the family oh, contact with him what a lovely man <laughs> i can see why you love him so much i think i i understand what you're saying not everything is black or it, white it's, it's there's true. something gray in the world it's, but it's this true. fucking guy i mean when you see a man physically hit your mother and i'm with you completely yeah it's really kind of I'm hard. with you completely and then this man shot your mother yes i mean in, in all seriousness i don't this is the anger i mean this guy abel yes he, whether he, I guess he was drunk at the time, he just says to your mother, you fucking ruined my life. Uh -huh. You, the kids, everyone ruined my life. Everyone's going to die. Takes out a gun. Mm -hmm. Your mother, the bra bravest woman in the world, did the bravest thing ever. Steps in front of her children. Yes. She gets shot in the buttocks. Right. Runs to the car. And then he takes the gun and he shoots her in the head. Yes. The, head, the bullet travels out of her arm. Uh, out of her nose, right. goes through the, her eye, in into the back, her nose. In the back of her head, out through the front of her nose. And she lived. She lived. She didn't just live. I hate this guy. She lived like she's, like, normal. Now, here's the kicker to me, and I don't get it. This guy didn't do a day in jail. No. Well, he, I guess a day maybe, but no. no. He, yeah, he never went to prison. No. How do you reckon that? I mean, how does that happen? Well, that, that's what you should ask every woman who's been abused, not just in America, but all over the world. How this is like this is the, the world we but live he in. He shot a yeah, human this, being and didn't this, do a day in jail. This is the jail. world we live. You know that in America, you've got states in America where they call them crimes of passion. What the hell is a crime of passion? It's bullshit. You, you literally can claim that as part of your defense in America. You can say no, it's a crime of passion. Was there a trial? Yeah, but the, the, the and the judge says uh, you'll do three years of the, uh, probation. Bas basically, they argued on their side. No, but 
then the kids won't have a dad and he doesn't have a criminal record. And it was very similar to the OJ thing, for instance, where you realize it's all the minor infractions that the police don't take seriously that then lead to the large thing. Because after, after the OJ thing, you go back and you realize how many times the police were called to the house and they didn't write OJ up. They didn't arrest OJ. He didn't have a criminal record. And so you realize this is a thing. That's my thing, Howard. And that's it's honestly, unbelievable. Do you it, think that's it, where your sense of social justice comes from and wanting to host The Daily Show and maybe right some of the wrongs in the world? I, I think maybe it's grown in my life because of that, definitely. Yeah, I mean, that's a defi I mean, I, I honestly— Because I, I think it's trash. I won't lie to you. I think it's trash. But that's that's the big thing. People go, like, why aren't you more angry? And I go, like, but everyone should be the same level of angry because this happens. I'm lucky. I, I, and you I, see, like, you say to me, how can you be happy? Because Because I still have my mom. And she's functioning, and she's not brain damaged, and she's not like in a wheelchair. Imagine, and she's got a wonderful sense of humor. Imagine that. She laughs about it. She said to you right <laughs> after, right, laying in the hospital after she's been shot by her husband. Yes. She goes, now um, you should be happy. You're the prettiest one in the family because yes. I'm she missing said, half my nose. She said, you're officially the best looking person <laughs> yeah. in the family. That's some mom. She's she's got an incredibly positive attitude. Yes, she does. And 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 for the life of me, maybe it's all this religion you had growing up. I think it is. I Are think you it still is. a religious man? Do you I'm believe spiritual. in God? I'm spiritual but i'm not religious you said the best thing about going to church and you went to church a lot a ton you said you didn't have tv you didn't have music right. you didn't have anything you didn't have any pop culture mm -hmm. your fascination your your entertainment was church yes and you're right when the guys would get up who claimed to be possessed yes and they'd start that was the best thing ever the best thing you ever that saw was the best thing in the world that, because like, church was my entertainment i i the way like young kids were watching thundercats and like voltron i was watching samson and delilah and by the way, that shapes a comedian, too. The fact that you're watching people and you're not watching some <laughs> retread of what people are that's supposed true, to be actually. like. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you pick up some things. Yeah, and I was going to different church. I mean, we would go to church maybe between four and six times a week, and it was all different types of churches. And so great I also characters. Got to, and I think that's where I learned accents, and because I, every church was different. We'd go to a white church. We'd go to a black church. We'd go to an Indian church, color church. Like, we'd, my mother would just take us. Would to you, every culture of church possible. Being in South Africa, because you were a light-skinned black man, were you we or black child? Were you were you ridiculed at church too? Did you no, catch comments? No, 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 no you I, didn't catch no. any of that shit. People, no, you, I was lucky. Apartheid ended when I was six. We achieved democracy in South Africa when I was ten. So for me, now I just grew up in this world. All that happened was people misread me, so they thought that I was what was known, what's known in South Africa as colored, right? Right. Which I don't mind if people call me that because colored is it's weird. It's it's it's. Imagine if, um, imagine if black people and white people got together at some point, and I mean, it starts in like colonialism, et cetera, and, and you, you have a lot of light-skinned children like me. Right. And then the law says people of different races aren't allowed to mix. So now you've got this mixed race in the middle, so they only can have children with each other. And so <laughs> a, a, a whole new culture of people came to be in South Africa that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. And so culturally and, and physically, physically they look like me, but culturally we're not the same. And, and so sometimes people would think I am of the colored culture and, and I would be like, no, but that was, that was it. The that absurdity was the thing. is endless. It is. Racism it is. is absurd. That's the problem. Oh, it's just, it's just so, it's so powerful.